You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday 17th October and I'm Brendan from Milford Asset Management. It was once again another turbulent week for markets, highlighted by Thursday's S&P 500 trough to peak move of 5.3%, the largest intraday trading range since March 2020. The move occurred on the back of hotter than expected CPI in the US, where headline CPI printed at 8.2% versus consensus at 8.1%. Most notably, core CPI, which excludes food and energy and is generally considered a more reliable barometer of inflation, increased 6.6% from a year earlier, the highest level since 1982. We continue to see a rotation from goods to services, with shelter costs reaching another consecutive record high month on month. This report likely sealed the deal for another 75 basis point hike from the Fed next month, and the market is now pricing a 66% chance of another 75 basis point hike for December, versus just a 17% chance pre-CPI. The initial market reaction was swiftly lower. However, this turned around, and the S&P 500 closed the day up 2.6%. This seems counterintuitive at face value. However, the large turnaround is attributable to monetization of hedges, which caused large buy flow in the market as well as existing bearish positioning going into the print. This move was almost completely unwound on Friday, as 10-year government bond yields again breached 4% in the US, and the S&P 500 fell 2.4%. In the UK, focus continues to be firmly on policymakers. Earlier in the week, the Bank of England increased daily government bond purchases to $10 billion in an effort to provide stability to the market and assist UK pension funds in meeting margin calls. That temporary support ended on Friday, so this week begins without the safety net of the BOE acting as a backstop for forced sellers. Elsewhere in the UK, we had the jobs report for August, which outlined a strong labour market. The number of employees on payrolls increased 69,000, almost double the consensus expectations of 35,000. Employment fell by 109,000, but a steep decline in activity pushed the unemployment rate down to 3.5% versus expectations of 3.6%. Despite this, there are some signs that the market is cooling, as vacancies fell further in September. However, at 1.23 million, vacancies remain significantly above pre-pandemic levels. This further solidifies the case for a large rate hike from the BOE when they meet next month, with the market now pricing a 100 basis point increase. In Australia, we got a read on the consumer via the Westpac Consumer Confidence Index. The headline level fell slightly to 83.7, which remains in deeply pessimistic territory and is comparable to lows witnessed during the COVID pandemic and the GFC. Interestingly, Westpac note the RBA decision to hike by 25 basis points instead of 50 basis points saved the index from falling materially further. Interviews conducted pre-RBA, when it was widely thought the RBA would hike 50 basis points, showed a decline in index level to 77.4, whereas the interviews conducted after the RBA hiked by a smaller 25 basis points showed slightly better sentiment. In equity news, Qantas surprised the market by guiding to underlying profit before tax of $1.2 to $1.3 billion for the first half of 2023, which compared to consensus at just $467 million. For context, the huge upgrade to first half numbers is above the entire FY23 market consensus of $1.1 billion, and almost as much as it made in the full year before COVID disrupted the business. Unsurprisingly, shares rallied 8.7% on the day, the biggest gain in two and a half years. Financials outperformed the broader Australian market last week after Bank of Queensland outlined the degree of rates leverage across the sector. Despite missing consensus slightly on FY22 cash earnings of $508 million, the stock rallied more than 11% given bullish management commentary on FY23 net interest margins. Management indicated that the exit net interest margin was above fourth quarter net interest margin of 1.81%, which was taken very positively by the market. Shares of baby bunting fell over 20% on Tuesday after the AGM update indicated 230 basis points of gross profit margin compression. Of this compression, 60 basis points was driven by poor execution of the loyalty program, while the balance was driven by factors such as domestic freight rates, FX headwinds, and decreased demand on play gear. New Zealand-listed RV operator Tourism Holdings was the best performer on the NZX50 last week after the business upgraded FY23 net profit after tax to greater than 33.5 million from a range of 17 to 30 million. The upgrade was driven by greater certainty over forward rental revenue for the upcoming busy season, as well as greater rental yields given ongoing supply chain disruptions impacting RV availability. In the week ahead, UK policy will continue to be in focus, while we also get a read on the inflation situation there, where expectations are for a 10% headline CPI print and a 6.4% core CPI print. 
We will also be watching New Zealand CPI, where the market expects a moderation to 6.5% year-on-year versus 7.3% in the second quarter. In Australia, we get the September employment report and RBA minutes for the October policy meeting. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week.